taking you up to 2 p.m. Don't forget, Rob Schneider tickets at 1 p.m. in a couple hours. But right now, we are joined by nine-year MLB pitcher Trevor May, who last pitched for the Oakland A's. Trevor May, thank you so much for joining us, man. Very excited to have you on. Of course, guys. Thanks for having me. Now, first and foremost, Trevor, our, our producer told us that you and your wife are expecting any day now, so you might yeah. you might need to leave the the interview a little early. What what's going on? Is it, is it your first one? Tell tell yeah. us all about it. Yep, first uh, first kid. We are now officially four days past the due date. So oh man, it's, it could be any moment. But I think I think we're safe. I don't think I'm going to be here too long to the point where I can't finish up the interview. And, and no, no, home. yeah, we'll we'll get you out of there. Yeah, no, I I believe. My daughter, she is what seventeen months now. We went a week over, so you might you, you it might take a while, but it's going to be beautiful when it happens, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's get to, I guess, something that I I would call sad and and beautiful in the in in two different ways. What happened yesterday in Oakland, the last game as of right now that will be played in the Coliseum for the Oakland A's. Why don't you just give us your thoughts on yesterday and then we'll kind of get into the situation as a whole. Um, yeah, sad day. Definitely. Um, you know, uh, the thing that got me probably the most was the, uh, the grounds crews reaction. Mm. And, uh, you know, those guys have been there for a very long time. They are, uh, in, in an organization that has a lot of very, a lot of long tendered, uh, employees. Those guys are up there, uh, in, in, in leading the way. Um, and, uh, it's one of the best playing services I ever played on the way that they kept that field up, um, is incredible by, you know, what we know with, uh, resources and, and how they had to do things. So, um, big, big tip of the cap to them and, uh, you know, the, the chant at the end and the way the fans, um, I don't know. Uh, some, one thing that's super astounding to me about the Oakland A's fans is, was their ability to kind of separate, um, the, the people that they interact with uh, in the organization from the people that they're angry with um, and able to kind of flip, flip the switch from we're super supportive and we're, we're having a good time together to uh, directing their ire really well. And that's not easy to do. So they, you know, it was great to see Katze out there leading a chant at the end um, and for them to be and to embrace it and, and not, and, and know what that moment was for and be in it. Uh, it was you know, incredible to see, but uh, it, overall, a sad day for mm -hmm. Oakland. Yeah, Trevor, you mentioned those grounds crew and the, the scene on Wednesday, I think, touched everybody of the grounds crew scooping up the dirt and putting it in people's yeah. water bottles, their souvenir cups. It was just an amazing scene. And uh, yeah, like you said, just the, definitely thinking of those people who are losing their jobs and, and stuff like that. And w just in general about this entire situation, has there been a, a thing about the relocation or just about maybe how they've treated the fans um, that just hasn't really sat well with you the most or, or you just can't really seem to to get over how little this part of it all makes sense um yes uh to answer, <laughs> can you pick to, one i guess is the, yeah probably to, the, the, yeah i'm trying to uh try to wrap this into a bow as best i can I, my, honestly it was it was it's less about see like there's precedent for team teams move right yeah. um this team's moved twice uh, right. The Dodgers moved. Everyone moves um, at some point. Uh, not everyone, but a lot of teams have moved. It's not the idea, I think, of the move itself. It was the way it was done and uh, the lack of acknowledgement for those people that were going to be adversely affected um, by the people making the decision. That is my biggest uh, uh, thing that sticks in my teeth is just people who have infinite power and very little consequences to anything they do. Um, treating a people who have depended on first of all their job there's a bunch of security guards that were there for more than two decades uh you know like i i can't it makes me so sad to think about how the process of going and you know finding different work uh for that amount of time to get that many hours is going to be for them because that's what they have on their resume and that's you know it, it's it's just makes me really really sad um and they haven't been acknowledged publicly they haven't been acknowledged uh, uh, as far as I know in any real way by, you know, they have been for their in their direct superiors, which I believe everybody there is doing a great job of at least trying to be sympathetic with the people that are below them, um, especially the people that get to get to move with the teams to keep their jobs. There aren't that many of them, but there are a few. 
Um, I, I just, that every time I think about it, it just puts me, throws me into a rage. Um, and then, you know, we had the recent, um, the recent letter to the fans that just, uh, just took me to, uh, I couldn't begin to understand what the motivation for that was. I have <laughs> no idea because I just don't think I have the, I've, I've had that mindset in my life that I need to go find a way to, you know, tell everyone I'm part of the people who are losing out here. Uh, it was just obnoxious and, and disrespectful and drove me nuts. So I couldn't, I couldn't let that one go. Talking to Trevor May, former Oakland A. Trevor, I grew up in the Bay Area, okay? I played in the Coliseum in, in high school. So I'm out here now. I'm in Sacramento. And you can imagine it's been a little bit of a confusing situation as somebody who has ties. I lived in Oakland for a couple of years, and now I'm doing Sacramento Radio, where the A's are going to play next, supposedly. And there's been a, a little bit of a, a push-pull between Sacramento fans and, and Oakland fans. I... I if you can, I'm hoping you could debunk this for me because yesterday, one thing I saw for people that, not from people in Sacramento per se, but one thing I saw a lot of people talking about, well, if the fans had showed up like this the last some odd years, maybe they wouldn't be leaving. And I feel like a lot of those people haven't done their homework and maybe don't understand the situation. Can you debunk the idea that Oakland – and the fan base in Oakland is the reason why they are no longer going to play in the Coliseum. Um, sure. Uh, I think that first of all, the, 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 the decline in the number to where it's become the really low numbers really started um, when the team was really good for a few years, uh, despite their ownership, because it was all guys that were traded there and then developed themselves there and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then they tore it down again, and it's just a constant, we're never going to get an opportunity to put ourselves in a position. We're not on the same page as the people making these decisions. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe it or not, people get fed up. Um, yeah. It becomes an abusive relationship at that time where you keep told something's going to happen, and then it never does. At some point, no matter how much they love their team, they're going to stop engaging in the way they were. And it became confusing for them. How do I, how do I continue to uh, support this team? knowing that as I support them, I am paying the person that I don't respect. Um, there, there becomes a breaking point. Uh, and as more and more stuff came out about the outrageous amount of money John was asking for from the government in order to get this huge complex done uh, mm -hmm. to create John Fisher World. And, and it, it, <laughs> it's, it's just like, of course, they're just they got tired. Um, yeah. And that happens. And it's, you know, let's we don't have to act like it's the it's the perfect location for a stadium. Mm -hmm. And like, there's all there's that those things exist, right? It's an old place. It's it's mm -hmm. there. It's hard to get to. Um, it, for for some people like it, it's just not that that stuff exists as well. But it's not their fault. Because I believe this was the plan uh, from the beginning. Because at the end of the day, uh, John bought the bought the team for a lot less money than it's worth now. And he sees an opportunity to increase that worth until the day he wants to get out. And I think it's all about, this is, this is a purely driven by ego. Look at, look, look at this business I built um, mm -hmm. when it's literally, he could, well, he is, has been an absentee owner. Um, and it has, it just, it, it, it's a cash printing machine. No, no team has lost money uh, in any real way since 20, 2020 withstanding. Um, no matter what they say, nobody loses money. He just wants to make more money. It's not that he's not making money. He just wants to make more money. Uh, so for that, for you to think that it's the, the, the fans that funnel the money into this team, they did the only thing they knew how to do. And that is withhold their wallets because that's the only power they have. And I respect them for that. If you are unhappy with how something is being done, especially when it's an entertainment industry, you lose money. If you, if you're a movie production studio and you constantly make terrible movies, that don't make any money, you're not going to make any money. It's not, you're not entitled to make money because you own a movie uh, a production company. And uh, I think John sees the world that way, that if he owns something, he's entitled to make as much money from it as humanly possible. So it's not their fault. Um, they were just fed up as everyone would be in this situation or should be, in my opinion. 
Trevor, I think you might have kind of touched on it there, or maybe that's just fully your answer. But in your retirement video, I mean, you did specifically kind of, I won't say go out of your way, but but you wanted to make a point to kind of single out John Fisher um, and, and make a statement towards him. What exactly led you to to really want to do that in uh, something that is personal to you? I mean, it's your retirement. It's how you want to address it. Why did you feel like it was important for you to single out John Fisher in that? I'll be honest. It was completely unplanned. I was not wow. planning on going down that route, maybe throwing wow. some jabs, but um, someone, this happens to me, someone got me, someone said something in chat uh, that was sympathetic, like, oh, you finally escaped from John Fisher, right? And I something hit me that everyone that I really grew to, to uh, really enjoy being around and, and created some relationships with over the year I was there, uh, it, it just hit me all at once that they all are not escaping. Mm -hmm. and that hit me hard and it was already a super emotional day so like i was like up oh, here we go i'm just gonna do it and then it just kind of streamed out of me because i'll be honest i had i had done a lot of reflection and thinking about his role and the way that he operates and honestly the way that people like john and people like him uh use the world uh as as whatever they want it to be um and i have a certain sticking point there too and he just is some some people who are very wealthy are very good at spinning what they do as as positive or or, or as a necessary john isn't uh he's inept he tries but something tell like just something he just does not understand what human beings care about um and so like that's why i keep coming back to it after he keeps putting out little doing little like the the least amount of effort things in order to get some goodwill it, it just because it's fear i think he's afraid uh, of what people say and what they do so that's why i decided to do it it had been it had been on the top of my mind if you ask any player um and and honestly uh i don't i don't blame a single guy who is in the a's organization right now for just not for for just kind of sitting on their hands and just keeping it to themselves however they feel because it's he's the type of guy to take that personally and it's just not worth it. And I, I respect them for that. But if they, if anyone asks a player I played with that was on that team, this was, this didn't come out of nowhere. This right. was a consistent every day, every, there was always something, uh, there was always some little thing uh, that, that was uh, annoying, but um, so it just boiled out. It had, it had just been building for months and months and months. And uh, I felt free. I felt free to say it. So that's where it came from. Trevor May, this has been awesome. Nine-year MLB veteran, former Oakland A. Trevor, one more before we get you out of here. As someone who played in the show, and it's called the show, A's now going to play in a, a, a triple-A ballpark. Number one, did you ever find yourself playing at Sutter Health Park? And number two, how would you feel being in the show playing in a minor league ballpark? Um, I did. I actually played there last year for, for a game. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that everyone there, there was doing the best they could with the, the resources there were, uh, the mm -hmm. clubhouses, uh, are not even in the main stadium. They're like in portables out in left field, right. which is not going to do it. Um, uh, if that, if it stays that way, it, there, not a lot of guys are going to be excited to go play away yeah. uh, in Sacramento. And I want to be very clear. That is not an indictment of Sacramento as a city, mm -hmm. as a city. Yes. Um, I'm actually, there is one tiny little silver lining and that is uh, a, a place gets a big league team that hasn't had one. And that's mm -hmm. cool. It's going to be really cool to see how fandom blossoms there and see what, see how that happens. I know there is, you know, we don't, they're probably not the loudest voices, but there are people that are excited to have a team. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I heard it, it is turf. It's going to, it's, not, it's going to be hot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, this is something that is going to be really interesting to see how, uh, it changes how the game's played and how teams prepare. Um, so I, I wouldn't be too excited. I, that's kind of part of being in the, in the show mm -hmm. is, uh, not having to play in AAA parks anymore. So, right, uh, going right. to one stinks, but it will be, there are things happening. I don't know mm -hmm. what things, but they are going to upgrade some things because mm -hmm. they have to. Um, so I don't know what those are. So it's kind of hard to give you a full, full right. um, breakdown. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be super pumped on it. But it's one of those things you just, uh, we have a saying, just wear it.
Yeah. No. Yes. You just got to get it done and, and, and figure it out. Trevor May, thank you so much. This has been great. Continue your great work on YouTube, on Twitter. You are popping on YouTube. So be sure to give Trevor a follow. He is really in the in the weeds on all this stuff. We will talk to you soon.